as Hebrew tells us that God has spoken in times past, timeless ways and different matters through the prophets to our fathers. But after this last day spoken yes. to us by Christ, yes. He is the final revelation yes. and the full revelation of God. Yes, That's what Hebrews is all about. Christ is a full and final revelation. Not only that, He is the more excellent and superior sacrifice. Yes, sir. What that sacrifice could not do, washing away the consciousness of our sins and guilt, He has. Amen. Being so much better, He has provided better things for us. Yes. A better way, better promises, better sacrifices, a better country to look toward. So during the week as we gather together, I'm going to share with you some things about Jesus. And I hope that in it, you'll be able to be captivated by the one which captivated us by his love. I thank him for his goodness and kindness. So during the week, share what you may hear. Pray, invite individuals to come. And let us open our hearts to the word of the Lord. Could we stand this afternoon? We should go first to Colossians chapter 1. I want to talk to you about the preeminence of Christ. In Colossians chapter 1, after his introduction and the prayer that he prays that we would walk worthy of him and be filled with all the knowledge of his wisdom, he makes mention that Christ has redeemed us from our sins in verse 14. I want to pick up reading in verse 15. Who, that is Christ, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether it be things in earth or things in heaven, and you, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now he hath reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unapproachable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. The Lord bless his word. You may be seated. Paul's letter to the church of Colossians is one of those uh, prison epistles. There are four of them. That's why I leave it he writes one too. He writes the letter to Colossae and to Ephesus and then to the church at Philippi. The church at Philippi was probably uh, the, last, the last one. He shares some common things with, and you'll find them when you read in Ephesians and Colossians. In Ephesians you'll see the church as the body of Christ. Here you'll see the head of the church. There we see Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father, far above all principality, power, and mind, and that we sit with Him in heavenly places. Ephesians identifies us with Him. But in Colossians, He tells us that He is preeminent over all things. This verse, verse 18 of chapter 1, and also in chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, are the keys to this uh, letter. He tells us that we, that Christ did have over all things over all principalities and powers he makes mention of, and that we are complete in him. So in verse uh, 9, we uh, that he is the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. That is, God dwells in him, or the Godhead dwells in him bodily. He is the fullness of that. And yet in Ephesians chapter 1, it tells us that uh, the church is the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Catch it. Christ came the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. John says he's full of grace and full of truth and we beheld his glory. And then Paul tells us 
that he who feels the fullness of God, and we see that bodily in Christ, the church is to be that to the world. He who is the fullness of all, the church is the fullness of him that filled all in all. In other words, people are to see Jesus in us. Quite simple. Jesus should be seen in all that we do. That we would grow up in all things in Him in love. The early church made a statement which very few people are able to state today, but it was a testimony of them. As He is, so are we in this world. If we say that, is there a, ting a, a, a tingling symbol? Does it sound sure or uncertain? That's the way the early church was. Matter of fact, it tells us uh, about it. They took knowledge they had been with yes. Jesus. Yes. These men who have turned the world upside down have come hither also. The resurrection of Christ was so vivid and alive and real to them that no one could stop them. For the one who died on the cross rose again the third day yes. and he is preeminent over all things. So Paul in his letter to the church at Colossae wants to let us know that Jesus uh, he is supreme and that He is our sufficiency. The supremacy and the sufficiency of Christ is seen in the letter. Now, I'm not going to share with you all things about the whole, the whole letter. That takes us the whole week. I've got some other things I'd like to say. But here it is that Christ is preeminent. Let's get it first. In talking about Jesus, let's put it the way it is. He is first and foremost in all things. He is not something to be added to. He is superior over all things. When I went to you know, my first trip to Germany, I mean to India, a friend of mine came. He was when we were talking uh, about he wanted to show me uh, a picture, uh, a mosaic thing that was made, and it showed all the re uh, religious leaders. And in the side of it, in the middle of it, was a bigger portrait of Jesus, and they surrounded him. And he said, don't you think that's really good? They see Jesus as the center. I said, well, yes and no. Why? I said, well, what they aren't to do is they aren't to have Jesus sitting in a chair on a throne and all of them bowing. That's the best view. Not that you look at religions and Jesus is the best of the religions. I want you to know He is the only way to God. There is none like unto Him. And we get to the place where Jesus is preeminent in all things. Now notice the writer gives us reasons why Jesus is preeminent. Number one, as he relates to God. Number two, as he relates to creation. Number three, as he relates to the church. And number four, as he relates to life. Notice in reference to the first. He tells us who have made him all things, who is the image of of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. In relationship, He is, in relation to God, the image of the invisible God. How does Christ relate to God? He is the invisible expression, He is the visible expression of the invisible God. Jesus Christ has come and He has revealed to us who it is. So when we talk about Jesus being preeminent, He is preeminent in His relationship to the Father. The second person of the Trinity is coming to us in bodily form. He has revealed to us God. Matter of fact, He is the one that revealed God to us in the, in the Old Testament. For it tells us that no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son hath revealed Him or declared Him. So when you see all those pictures in the Old Testament, you'll see that it is Jesus. We mentioned all ago the pastor did about seeing the Lord high and lifted up in Isaiah. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And then in John chapter 12, John says that the one that he saw was none other than Christ. They, that, they presented Jesus. When they preached the Scriptures, they preached Jesus. Yeah. I think that we've forgotten something about the Old Testament because we think the New Testament is superior to it. Well, without it, we would be incomplete. We need them both. But Jesus is revealed that. Matter of fact, on the road to Emmaus, we hear Jesus making these statements to them that He opened the Scriptures and taught them about Himself. Yeah. Now, wouldn't you like to have been there? Yes. If Jesus said, one of being in my life and you can choose to be there, which one would you choose? Would you choose the resurrection to see an empty tomb? Would you watch Him die on the cross? 
When you hear well, see him as a babe, if I had my choice, I'd say, Lord, let me walk with you with the other two apostles on the way to Emmaus. I'd like to hear Jesus talk about himself. Yes. Yeah. And all it does is it says that he opened the scriptures and revealed himself in the, in the law and the prophets and the psalms. All of it speak of him. So when Christ is revealed, when God is revealed, it is Jesus there. Remember the one that came to Abraham. Jesus said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced in it. You're not even 50 years old. How could it be that you have seen Abraham before Abraham was? I am. He didn't say before Abraham was, I was. That would have made him a created being. And one of those angels that walked with him. But oh no, before Abraham was, I am. They took stones up to kill him. Why? Because he is claiming to be the very one who appeared to our father Abraham. Hello, he got it right. He is the one that appeared to Abraham. He is the expression of the invisible God. If you want to know what God is all about, take a good look at Jesus. Because Jesus reveals to us God. Amen. All others may talk about Him. All others may uh, deal with Him as a matter of fact. But this one, even at the age of 12 when He was sitting down, you see, a boy at the age of 12, he is able to now go with his father and offer sacrifice before then he's with his mother. He'll take a year of study from the age of 12 to 13, and then he'll uh, pass his test of army, discipline, and inner uh, manhood. So Jesus is 12 years old. He's taking his first lamb. It's, uh, it's amazing to him. He's a thinking, and he's a thinking. Uh, there's no sin to be a, a, a sacrifice for. Nothing I ask the Lord to forgive me. Looking and finding and there's nothing. And all of a sudden he's beginning to realize this lamb I'm carrying is what I'm going to be. Gets in the temple, this is my house. All right. Amen. And he begins to tell the stories. And I suppose some of the teachers looked around and said, he talks like he was there. Yeah, ah, he was there. He was the one that spoke. He was the one that spoke to Moses. He was the one that revealed himself to Abraham. He was the one that appeared to Joshua, uh, the Lord of hosts. Uh, and yes, Jesus, Jesus. All through the Old Testament, oftentimes we tell the story of how we are to be with uh, the types of what Christ are to be. You know, so if you get it right, if you look at the Old Testament, you'll see all the things in the Old Testament in a different perspective because Jesus said, in them they speak of me. Yeah. If you search them, they speak of me. Yeah. How, many, how many of you ever heard that sermon about David uh, and, and Goliath? And how, you know, he kills the giant. We talk about that, you know. you got giants in your life and you need to kill them. I don't think that's so much of the story about us finding encouragement in David that way. Nice to say it. But I want you to know that David, I, if you want to find yourself, we would have been those who were cowardly. Yeah. We may have been like Saul, not willing to fight. But David is a, is, a, is a type of Christ. He comes to destroy the giants for us. Amen. That's what we look at. We see Jesus in all of them. That's what Moses said. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 Paul said, he is the rock yeah. that Moses struck. He is, as they were baptized unto Moses, even so we're baptized unto him. Let me say, Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you want to know what God is like, what would God look like? How would he look? How would he dwell with us? What, what would be his character traits? Take a good study of Jesus. Read the Gospels over and over. Jesus tells us this is who the Father is all about. Jesus is great and preeminent because he is the only one that relates to God as equal. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not only that, in reference to creation. He made all things. He is the first form from creation. That is, he is the first cause. He is the one who creates all things. He is the beginning of all things. Everything begins with Him. And the Bible tells us in John's writing, who was with God and that He had created all things. We are made by Him. He is the instrument through which the Father has created. Now I was here before, I'll state it again. 
All things in the Trinity work this way. It comes from the Father, through the Son, by the Holy Ghost. So when the Father creates all things, He creates all things through the Son, by the power of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus is the instrument through which the Father will do all things. Now Jesus has created all things. That is wonderful. In relation to creation, He is preeminent. We make things. We take something and we make something out of it. You give me something, I can make something. But can any of you take nothing and make something out of it? God can take nothing and make something out of it. Amen. Give me something, I can do it. And that's what we do. Give us a little tree, give us a little this. Someone said, uh, I told God, God, butt out of my life. I don't want to have you anymore. God said, well, then get your own dirt. <laughs> Whether we like it or not, God can't butt out of our life. You may not want him, but he is our very source of life. You may deny him. You may not believe in him. But that doesn't alter the fact that he is the creator of all things. Jesus has made all things. And all things are for him. And all things consist through him. Jesus is preeminent because of how he relates to us in creation. Thirdly, Jesus is preeminent because he is the head of the church. Head of the church. Yes, we can't, our bodies wouldn't exist much without our head. That's right. I like it sometimes the ladies, they'll say, the, she'll say, he may be the head, but I'm the neck. And I'm the neck that turns the head. Honey, you can't turn the neck. I mean, you can't turn the head until the head tells the neck to turn the head. Amen. Amen. Head over all things. But sometimes we want to live as if Jesus is not there. We want to run the church. We want to run our lives as if He is not there. He gives us yep. life and we say thank you. And we want to take the life and run with it. I want you to know He is the head of the church. That means that we hear our directions from Him. He tells our bodily members how to work. And if we see ourselves as we are, the body of Christ, He can give directions to every one of us and tell us how we are to live. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus is the head of the church. Now, let me... Uh, the implications of that is clear. Because Jesus, I mean, Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 talks about Jesus Christ that he had ascended to the right hand of the Father is above all principality, power, mind, and dominion. Given a name which is above everything. And then it tells us that he is the head of all principalities and powers. Take your, uh, to take your Bible, please, to a verse. I want you just to look at it. It deals with this headship of Jesus. Chapter 1, verse 22. Ephesians. Are you there? And I put all things under His feet. God has put all things under His feet. And gave Him to be the head over all things to the church. Now Colossians said that Christ is the head of the church. But why is He the head of the church? Not only for our life. That we may be in His body. The fullness of Him that dwells all in all, but He overhead over all yes. to the church. Jesus being head of the church illustrates to the world what it is to live under the rule of Christ. When Christ has full and complete sway of the church, the world looks at it because our head is invisible, sitting at the right hand of the Father. But they see a people living and working together. Here is life. Here is love. Here is liberty. Here is freedom. Praise the Lord. Here is law to live by. When we live under Him and He gives directions to the church, the world can look and say, that's the kind of nation we need. That's the kind of people we need. There's the life that we can have. Jesus has him over all things to the church. He is head over principalities and powers that will come. Presently it is invisible. But there will come a time when it will rain from Jerusalem. 
Hillary Clinton just said recently, you know, that she uh, she's expecting a change. She's talking about a change. Uh, 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 religions and so forth and, and, and all. Well, there's a change coming, but she probably doesn't like the change. But there will be a change. Jesus will come. He will reign in Jerusalem. There will be nothing that will defile him in his holy mountain. Praise the Lord. There will be nothing like for adult entertainment and children entertainment. Nothing will offend. Oh, praise the Lord. Purity will reign. And the holiness, holiness under the Lord will be written on the bridle or everything that is made. There is coming a change. Sin will be defeated. Immorality will be uh, no more as expressed now. If man commits adultery and lives in homosexuality or other things, it will be the exception and not the rule. It will be a life in which purity reigns and reigns forever. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ, as he lives as the head of the church, we have a golden opportunity to tell the world Jesus is preeminent. Look what he does in our life. He has taken us out of sin, out of darkness into his marvelous life. He has freed us and set us free indeed. Oh, glory to his name. Amen. Jesus should be preeminent because of how he relates to God. He's preeminent because of how he relates to creation. He is preeminent because he is the head of the church. And fourthly, it tells us he is preeminent because he is the firstborn from the dead. You know, there have been some people who have been dead, raised, and died again. Elijah raised somebody from the dead, and they died. Elisha. Jesus raised, as a matter of fact, Elisha. Lazarus died again, and Jesus' daughter died again. But here it tells us that he is the firstborn. Firstborn. He is the firstborn from the dead. He's not the first to be. Raised from the dead, but he's the firstborn from the dead. He's going to the other side, come back, never to die again. He has conquered death. Amen. When we need somebody, who should be preeminent? The one who reveals to us God should be preeminent. Who should be preeminent? The Creator Himself should be preeminent. Let every knee bow and declare that God is good. Glory to the Lord. Thanks be unto Him that the Creator is a holy God and not an evil one. Amen, amen. He should be preeminent because He lives and reigns in His church. But more than that, this one has conquered death. No man but Jesus has conquered death. Who should reign supreme? Jesus. He's conquered death. Praise God. Amen. Well, I'm trying to contain myself. Before the week's over with, I may be like a man man. I don't know. Come on. Come on. What makes Jesus more greater and greater and more better than the angels? By inheritance, he has received a better name. Through resurrection, he has inherited all things. Praise be the Lamb of God. Yes, amen, amen. Jesus. It's not Buddha, it's Jesus. It's not Allah, it's Jesus. Amen. It's not Mohammed, it's Jesus. It's not Confucius, it's Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can talk all you want. The philosophers are dead, but he, the truth, is alive forevermore. Religions have come and go, but I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus is preeminent. He has conquered, and he reigns forever. Yes. You all say a lot of things about Jesus. It's not so. It's not so. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. He has said some things that other people have not said. He's done things that other people have not done. Matter of fact, if you take every human being from Abel, go back to the first one, Adam. 
compare every one of us to him. There's none to compare with him. Take us all together. And if we can make a composite picture of all the great men of the earth, all the wisdom and everything, and we can make a great composite picture of all great men, they will look puny in the eyes of Jesus. There is none like unto him. They talk, but they're dead. He says, I have the keys of death and hell. I have conquered, and at my discretion, men will enter or not enter the gates of hell. At my discretion, I can give life and give death. Oh, praise the Lord. Nobody else can do that, my friend. Jesus is preeminent because he's come to death. Jesus is preeminent because he's the head of the church. Jesus is preeminent because he's the creator and sustainer of all things. He is preeminent because he is the express image of the invisible God. God's glory is seen in us through Christ. Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. Glory. So when others want to talk to you about their religion, or their religious leaders, says, just a minute. Let me tell you something about Jesus. Yes, Amen. Amen. That's right. I met, a, I met one time a, uh, this was back in the 60s. Some of you wasn't around. I was back in the 60s and they had the, uh, you know, the flower children. They had the movies. And yeah. And they, they, they pass out all this kind of stuff. And I was in Chicago in an airport, and one of the fellas come by. He's passing out these books, you know, and giving them to me. So, and he's wanting me to know, let me know some things about a Sun Moon and uh, his uh, organization and all that. And he said, I can give you a book. I said, okay. And, and, and I took it. And then he said, uh, uh, would, you, would you give a donation? I said, no, give a donation. He said, well, well, I can't give it without a donation. I said, you should have said that in the first place. <laughs> you said you want to give me something. Somebody. It's either free or not free. But, 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 but I haven't received donations. Before. Oh, you got a quota you got to read. How much are you supposed to get? He said, oh, 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 oh. And, and, and I got to talking to him. I said, uh, I, I'm sorry. There's someone greater than your leader. His name is Jesus. Yeah. He said, oh, Jesus, it's not. Uh, uh, the Christians say a lot of things about him that's not true. What's not true about him? He said that he is the light of the world. He said that he's the bread of life. He said that I'm the resurrection of life. He said that I'm the good shepherd. He said I'm the Lord of the sheepfold. He said if you see me, you see the Father. Right. Jesus said if you do not believe that I am, you'll die in your sin. Right. Yeah. The Bible said that he was, uh, he, was, uh, he was with God and he was God. And in the very beginning, he created all things. He spoke to us, came into the darkness and the light. Yes. All these things he said. Yes. What does your leader say about him, sir? He talked about him being the, uh, the Messiah to come. Yes. Well, I prefer the first Messiah instead of the second Messiah. I prefer the one that died and rose again and conquered death. Praise God. Jesus is preeminent. Let's get it straight. We're not called to tell him what to do. He tells us what to do. He is not one who asks for our permission. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is glorious and marvelous in all things he said we should do. Amen. The fever never tells the head what to do. The feet never tell the head what to do. The body doesn't look to head and says, how long? Uh -uh. What it says, we do. Amen. Unless, of course, something's wrong with the body. And if it's sick, the head can't do what it wants to do. But if you have a healthy body, the head can do all that it needs to do. Amen. We need healing in the body of the church. Because if there's healing in the body of the church, it's spiritually and morally, we would be healed. Oh, praise the Lord. What health is to the body, holiness is to the soul. If the church would be spiritually healthy. 
Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus is going to do all things to the church. The church is supposed to be the fullness of him that fill up all in all. But we live on crutches. We're not able to do what we ought to do. We need to spend some time and let Jesus heal us. More than just physically. We need to be healed emotionally. We need to be healed spiritually. We need to become a healthy people. Oh God give us a loaf of church. That is healthy before him. That he may work through us. That's what Jesus wants. To be the head of the church. So that the world may know that Jesus is preeminent yes. in all things. Yes. That's what it says. That's what it says. Yes sir. And he's the head of That he might have the preeminence. <laughs> preeminence. First centered in all things. Yes. Is your life centered in him? Is he foremost and first in your life? For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. One nineteen. It pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. That the inward man, may dwell, that He may strengthen the inward man, that God may dwell in us in fullness. Ephesians chapter. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a full 